Fred, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm Alfredo Borrego. I am a native of El Paso. I've been married for 30 years. Uh, I've lived in District 3, EPISD District 3, for about 24 years now. I own my own home. I have my own business. And I'm proud to say that my wife, myself, my three daughters were all products of EPISD. Wonderful. Tell me about uh, your feelings on standardized testing. Well, on standardized testing, um, I don't really like it, but it's a way for accountability. And uh, the other reason we have standardized testing is because it's mandated by the state of Texas and also by uh, um, the national government. Speaking of uh, the state of Texas, <clears throat> let's talk about the budget cuts. State's cutting uh, education funding pretty drastically. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I don't believe that's correct. I know that back in 2005, 2006, the state of Texas came up with um, a formula of funding schools, but they missed it by a long shot. And every year we lose uh, $5 billion for education, being that we're in a biennium, um, we lose $10 billion. Part of the reason that we are in the situation that we are right now is because of what happened 2005-2006. Mm -hmm. So what kind of uh, policies would you be advocating for to alleviate the problem on the local level? Well, um, right now I think the biggest one is going to be cutting down. But I believe that at, uh, what we need to do at EPISD is to look at the whole picture and restructure, restructure the whole organizational flow. By that I mean is to look at the whole picture and see what is not working, what we can do without, and uh, make sure that uh, we protect the classroom. Okay, so what kind of cuts are we talking? Well, uh, right now they're looking at different cuts, but we're not looking at the whole picture. What I would like to see is more, uh, a little more administration where every department is touched. Uh, maybe look at uh, principals on up. Uh, maybe somewhere between 5 to 10 percent. When you say a little them. more administration, you mean more cuts to administration or you'd like to see more members of administration? Um, what I mean by that is maybe some more cuts at administration and maybe again from uh, principals on up, maybe taking a pay cut. Okay. <clears throat> um, what other cuts would you look at? Well, um, maybe we, we could look into um, the police services Maybe, I don't know, maybe the canine unit, maybe doing away with a couple of police um, officers there. What I'm really hoping to do is that all departments are touched. The way it is right now, we're only nitpicking on certain areas and we're not looking at the whole picture. Don't EPISD taxpayers already pay for police services? Is it necessary to have a separate force dedicated specifically to the school district? Um, I mean, that, that's got to be a line item of in the millions of dollars, I would assume. I don't know what it is as far as what it costs uh, at this time, but yes, we are paying for uh, El Paso Police Department services and we're paying for uh, Police Department District services. And I believe that uh, we can maybe cut down on some of that and save uh, the taxpayers some money there. Um, what was it that made you decide to run? Everybody always has some sort of moment that gets them involved and gets them to, to step forward. For you, what was that catalyst? Well, for the last uh, 14 years, I've been involved with PTAs, uh, city committees, uh, El Paso Independent School District committees. And through those committees, I've seen the work that has been done. Uh, and also, I've spent a lot of um, thousands and thousands of hours volunteering. So I figured, hey, this is the this is the ultimate in volunteerism, is uh, being a school board member. Plus, I also believe that I can put my two cents worth into making the decisions for our communities. Speaking of cents, tell me what your experience is with uh, budgets, particularly well, big budgets. Well, I don't have experience with big budgets, not, uh, not a $468 million budget. I have experience with a half a million bu uh, dollar budget in my business. Uh, but it's basically the same. Uh, you have your departments, uh, you budget for this, you budget for that, you know, and um, 
that's pretty much it. Okay. How do you deal with conflict? How do you handle it? Well, conflict. I like to get both sides of the story and uh, try and make the best decision. You know, uh, weigh one side, weigh the other side, and try and make the best decision. There's been some discussion about expenditures to renovate a couple of uh, schools that I understand are going to be closed. Can you shed light on that? Mm, there's no. What way. were the what, what schools have been closed recently? Uh, the only one that was closed was uh, Houston, okay. Houston Elementary. And that was before I came on board. Okay. And there were uh, <clears throat> some bond money that was designated for Houston Elementary, which was a drop-off zone and a multi-purpose room. Now those were uh, removed and I was able to transfer that multi-purpose room from Houston to Alta Vista because Alta Vista was not in the, um, in the pickings for that. Okay. Um, let's talk about uh, parks. The city and county have been looking at creating a parks district. This is somewhat along the same lines of the police question I asked you earlier. Taxpayers pay twice for parks. They pay twice for recreation, I should say. Uh, they're taxed by the city and county for it, and then they're taxed in, by the school districts to pay for um, facilities for children to play. Do you feel like, or would you entertain the idea of folks that are advocating for the school, um, the school's uh, playground equipment and fields to be open to the public. Now that's a good question. Uh, back in 2003, at Hawkins Elementary, where I was the uh, PTA president, we went in agreement with the Neighborhood Association, Parks and Recreation, and what we did there was that we created a playground for the school. After hours, it became a park for the public, for the Neighborhood Association. Uh, for the whole neighborhood. And I believe that that's a good way of uh, building new schools. And uh, on the older schools, I believe we can incorporate those ideas also to where we're not double dipping into the taxpayers. So where school is in session, we have a playground. Now, also for security reasons, when school is in session, the playground has to be secure, meaning that the public can't come in. After school, open it up to the to the public and they become um, public parks and we were able to do that the very first time and I headed that effort at uh, the San Juan Park Hawkins Playground. Interesting. One of the things that doesn't get really talked about too often <clears throat> in the uh, discussion about the public corruption scandal was the fact that so many school board members were involved in that. Um, now nobody will ever say I'll take a bribe but my question is, is that if confronted, if asked to do something questionable, what, what would your reaction be? Well, that's pretty easy. <clears throat> I think that the school board members, they have three key roles. And that is the hiring and the firing of the superintendent. That's one. The second one is approving or disapproving the budget. That's the second one. The third one is policy. Okay, Coming up with new policy, revising old policy, and that's it. If uh, a contractor would come in and try and wine and dine it, that's not my place. That is with administration, and uh, I would just back away from it. Mm -hmm. That's pretty Do you think much it's appropriate it. for administration to be wine and dined? Uh, no, I don't believe it's appropriate. But I know that a lot of the meetings that are held are business meetings, and they might be held over um, over lunch or dinner, or maybe even some cocktails. But uh, I believe that those deals should be done in an office. Let's talk about technology in the classroom. What do you think about incorporating technology into the classroom? It's great. Mm -hmm. I love technology. I can't live without technology. Um, my business couldn't survive without technology. Uh, we need to incorporate it more and more. I believe it's great. Uh, particularly as it relates to ebooks. Talk about that. <clears throat> well, I think um, we have to be careful there where instead of going from one year eliminating books and going to e-books. I think we have to make a transition there to allow our students to evolve into the e-books. But I think uh, it can be done. It, I don't think that it should happen from one year to the next. Just one more question. There was a uh, bill that was proposed 
by State Representative Marisa Marquez that would in effect um, require that school board candidates have the same level of transparency in terms of uh, their campaign financing expenditures and, and collections um, as the other offices in town. Uh, what do you think of that? Beautiful. That's a good way. That is um, <clears throat> very um, transparent. EPISD, uh, we voted to do that in December, I believe, and it passed unanimously. And if you go to the website for the trustees, you will see their financial reports from January. And hopefully by the end of next week, you will see all of the candidates' um, financial reports on the website. Uh, do you have a final message if you're standing in front of a voter uh, or voters that are would potentially be watching this right now? What's your message to them? My message to them is I'm an honest person, I'm a dependable person, I'm hardworking, and I'm dedicated. That's what I bring to the table. All right, thanks. Thank you.